Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the BBG and Moosia World. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. 2K, so close. So close. And it's been a few days since a video because I was out celebrating birthdays over the weekend. That was fun. Everyone's getting so old now. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, so this guide is going to be a bit different to usual. I am going to work left to right, as I do as a standard. But I might often go off on a tangent when I get to something because it interacts with something else and I have to come back and explain why. So, first things first, top left. Obviously, you open up your inventory, you've got it here, you can expand this inventory. Now, <laughs> that's easier said than done because one um, bag of expansion is an extra 24 slots-ish, but it's going to cost you over 10,000 gold, so it's not really... Well, never mind that it's not really a priority, it's more that... It's too expensive because you need to upgrade the tree, this little tree thing, in order to increase the amount of perception overall you can hold as well as generate. So that's a whole other source of money that you need to spend. I'm currently actually saving for an inventory bag because I'm just full all the time. Now at the top, under property is obviously the amount of gold you have. To the right of that is erudite, which is the premium currency. Under that is prestige, which you get from both adventuring and leveling in general. Across from that, the little yin-yang. This is um, an interesting sort of thing. You have to actually go into world and do the eight trigrams, and you have to collect 28 fragments in order to create a eight trigrams that allows you to choose a buff, basically, for the day. But it only lasts one day. For example, I chose a buff where um, I would have better chance of crafting a good weapon once, or up to three times, I should say. But it ran out yesterday because I only managed to <laughs> make one before I left my previous sect. So as you can see, I've got a purple purple weapon here. It's pretty good. Not the best, but I love the name of it. Terrify. It's wonderful. Anyway, that's a weapon that I made, and I ended up praying for it through that interface. I didn't know what it was what it was going to do when I collected the 28, but turns out it's a day-long buff that can be very, very beneficial if you are making a weapon. And I honestly recommend only using it for that sort of thing unless you're somehow managing to get all of these Fortune Teller rune provenances as well, which is <laughs> easier said than done because they are, that costs erudite, which is, again, pay to win, not my realm of expertise. Now, obviously, across to the right here, third one down is where you switch language. I've said that before. I'm going to turn music off. Seriously, don't need it. And then under that is mail. You don't really get much mail in this game. The only mail you're going to get is when you start managing to do adventure, which is basically auto farm the highest level that you've unlocked. Now, I've only unlocked the third level. Again, I've said I've taken this very slowly, trying to um, sort of understand it, because there's no real age thing. There doesn't seem to be a that sort of competitiveness, which is nice in, in one hand. Obviously, there is uh, many competitions and intersect competitions and stuff like that especially in the arena, but I can't actually do this. Now, I will go into sect next, simply because this is a very important thing. You can leave sects as many times as you want, rejoin them, leave, whatever. The point is, you will need to likely hit up every single one of these sects, choosing the skills that you want. For example, in Wudang in the library, I've actually managed to find these skills that actually increase health, defense, and dodge. And I'm currently trying to learn all of those before I leave this sect. Now, in the comments, I obviously saw, you know, people asking, where the fuck do you learn horse physiognomy or whatever, the, whatever it's called? And that's a damn good question. That took me a very, very, very long time to sort of find an answer because I had to go into the Chinese forums because there were just no answers in English. And even that hasn't really explained a lot because you need to go to a place called the North Gang camp to learn the initial horse riding thing so I've actually bought horse riding one and two and three and I used one and two and then I tried to actually summon a horse and it's like nah you've not learned this and I'm like oh, what do you mean give me a fucking horse so I'm actually going to also try and find horse physio no because apparently it's through the sect but I honestly couldn't tell you I tried finding it do I have all these? I just need the dodge one next. So we've got 10 merit to go. How long? Five minutes. Yeah, I'll come back. I'll come back. Anyway, meeting hall is where you upgrade your rank. The higher the rank you have, the better the chore you can do across to the right. The more contribution you earn per 10, 15 minutes. And the more gold you get per 10, 15 minutes. Library is where all the skills are held. You will need sect merit, sorry. 
in order to get any of those skills, highly recommend you just do sect hopping. Just hop through all these sects, look for the best ones, stay there for them and leave. You know, I've chosen spearmanship because I fucking love spears. How many books are about spears? But this particular one is a sword sect, so I don't really care about that. What I care about are these base stat increases, which is exactly what I want. They're fucking beautiful. Mwah! Treasure house is where you buy everything to do with the sect, basically, like a sword for the sect. All these various bits of internal strength cultivation. So you can increase your cultivation base that way, but it's a bit expensive for my blood, personally, to buy that sort of stuff here, unless you're making your first weapon. So for example, I had to buy 10 of these pure irons and five of these copper chalcedonies in order to create my spear. And that's another thing that you have to understand this blueprint is one use. All blueprints are one use. That is that is a big thing. And it's very unfortunate. But it's kind of realistic, I guess, you know. You use up the blueprint and then you gain mastery in it over up in skill. See, I've got level one mastery. I've only made one spear, but I tried to make it as best as, you know, I could with that eight trigrams thing. But you'd have to make quite a few spears in order to get further up there but I'm waiting till I find a higher level spear sect basically. Now the arena is actually incredibly important if you join an arena and um, a sect that's too high level there's going to be no one who can do the arena so you will have to actually go back to earlier sects in order to do the arena. The reason for this is every time you challenge someone here you get three time three times of challenging it regenerates you know one challenge every two or three hours but the biggest thing is when you win or lose, you gain mastery in your current held Kung Fu. So you need to do this as much as you can. If you are in a sect and you're only there for the skills, just get the skills and leave and go straight back to a sect where you can participate in the arena, use up your chances, go out, do it again sort of thing. You know what I mean? It's incredibly important. It's the only reason that my stats are even high in mastery, except for the recent ones that I've got, like the Chung Yang skills. Those are the recent ones. Iron Spear Mastery 63, I got my internal cultivation thing up to 100% because that just needed to happen. Five Step Fist, I suppose I could forget, but I'm not going to, just because it's easy to level and I'm just going to keep it until I am full on martial arts and I need to forget some trash, sort of thing. Now, Training Ground is another place to learn mastery, of course. This is probably the slowest way to do it. It's, it's really slow. Like It's like 1%. For a 4 star plus, it's like 1% per 20 minutes. That is rough. But for 10 gold, if you're, if you're relatively active, it does stack up pretty quickly, I will admit. Sword Hall, it's called Sword Hall in every sect, even though it's not necessarily swords being made there. But this is where you select the blueprints in your inventory for the one-use creation of an item. Bear in mind, it's only one use. Don't panic when it disappears, alright? Now at the bottom here, we got Killer and Monk. Over time, if you have justice points, they will eventually go back down to zero over time because you just accumulate sins <laughs> as you exist, apparently. Because fuck us, right? <laughs> but getting that to 10,000 either way is net, isn't it basically a requirement if you want to join an evil sect or a pure justice sect. I don't know what's in them because obviously I've, I've remained neutral. I just don't have the gold to push up to 10,000 justice over time because it goes down over time as well. So you're spending more trying to keep it up there. At the moment, I am purely focusing on trying to increase my inventory size so I can claim my fucking rewards from going adventuring, you know? And that's another thing. Adventure itself, you're not going to actually unlock this until you hit middle extremity. Now, I'm not very high level. I'm only level 39. So I'm definitely not, you know, end game. This is the beginner, beginner guide. But once you do unlock adventure, you will have a bronze order. You can only do 28. So you see down here, I go my third one because that's the only one I've done. Well, the highest level one I've done. Begin, and then it will take down my total to 20. But it will take about two, three hours in order to do all of the things. And then you get sent all the rewards from doing that in your mail. And the issue is it's a bunch of items in your mail. So if your inventory is anything like mine, you can never fucking pick anything up. And you have to go into your inventory, sell some shit, try and figure out how many fucking spaces you're going to need. So, yeah, annoying. Annoying as hell. Now, Kung Fu. This is an interesting thing because you don't necessarily have to be in a sect to gain Kung Fu. You do actually get random encounters sometimes when you just go onto a different interface. Someone will just pop up and talk to you and be like, Oi, random event sort of thing. And that's actually where I got one of my secret skills, this Tai Shu Jing 
increases the speed of my enlightenment practice by 20 points per 12 seconds. Now that's fine. That's cool. I like that. But then the funny part was that bloke who I bought this thing of, he was like, I'm poor. I'm a destitute fucking noble. Please take my family's book. Keep it safe. You know, until I come back and buy it back off you. And I'm like, yeah, sure. So obviously as soon as he left, I read it and he comes back all pissed and he's fucking screaming at me like, how dare you read my family secrets? And then to top it all off, he beat the shit out of me. How is he a destitute no boy if he beat the shit out of me? You know what? I'm getting off track. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. So Kung Fu is a pretty straightforward. Once you hit level 7, 8 of a skill, you are actually going to need 80% mastery to get anywhere. And if it is a 4 star plus skill, you're actually going to have to start using, I guess, pills to break down the barrier of your martial art in order to improve it. So if you fuck up, you lose perception, you use the pills, get 100%. Obviously, you don't have to use the pills if you don't want to. 80% is a pretty high rate, but if anyone knows me, you know damn well I'm always at 100% because I like to be sure. <laughs> now, self-created, cannot do that yet. I need to unlock Renmai for that. That's just, fuck, that's a long way away. Skills in general are actually rare as hell. The only things that are going to be here for a decent duration is actually, you know, your casting skills, which is creation of items, basically, whether that be alchemy or spears or swords, whatever, it'll be here. And also blueprints are quite hard to actually buy. If they're not alchemy blueprints, kind of hard to buy. Now, mental arts, I haven't found any mental arts yet. Maybe that's just because of the sex I've joined. They just haven't been mental arts, I suppose. I wouldn't mind seeing what they do in general, but I will have to wait. Maybe I need to be a higher level for that. Or maybe I've just been unlucky. We'll see. I've been all over the place with this game, you know. <laughs> now, this, this, is, this is the complicated part. So in the Reborn Residence, obviously your name, Residence, I finally got it to Small Yard. I upgraded my 5 years tree to a 10 years tree so I could hold more perception at once. That was necessary. That was quite a lot of gold. I think 5,000 it was to get it to 10 years. And that's rough. Um, in hindsight, I kind of wish I had bought um, inventory space. But you can't regret it when it's already done, you know. Now, Kung Fu Arena. This is a cool thing. So you get people from your to go into your Kung Fu Arena. And they are basically masters that are quicker to train you in your Kung Fus than basically anyone in the sect. So I'm just going to go to the drunkard house real quick, just to explain. So I go into the bar and then there's three options here. This changes day to day. So different people will be here on different days. You choose a table that you want to go to and then you have the option of spending gold in order to invite one of the masters to go to your house. And then you get them for X amount of time, generally 24 hours or till takeover. And then you use them. They, they will be more expensive. You know, you're going to be looking at a three, four hundred gold lump sum or more to get someone really good to come in. But when I did that, I actually spent, like, I think it was 400 to invite some guy over. I trained my four star mastery on it. And instead of it being 20 minutes, it was like 90 minutes. It was 90 minutes of training and it was like 15% of mastery. I was like, holy shit, that's nice. And so now I understand the, uh, goodness of actually going into the Shamu gate into the arena and guessing them and getting people who are interested in you to come to your house so you can spar them basically. Since I'm in Shamu gate I'm actually going to explain something very important here. Mr. Sun and Peasant. Innocuous, subtle, you'd ignore them if you didn't go into them and actually understand what they do. So this is a bit of a fuck around but it's a great source of just weird random stuff that can be used so go into peasants oh sorry go into mr sun now what you have to do with mr sun is buy these fabrics basically and these are going to equate to these chests you got one purple chest two silver chests and three green chests that's what's going to happen here so i go into peasant give him the fabric i exchange three of the normal ones, two of the silver ones, one of the purple one. Back into Mr. Sun, and then you exchange for the chest. So I get one purple chest, two silver chests, three bronze chests. And you can do this once a day, obviously when tick over comes. Now they aren't always there. There will be a seven day period where they'll disappear. So if you log in and you don't see them there, 
they're, they're not there for X amount of time because it says, I come here on the 1st and 15th of every month and each time he waits for seven days and after that he goes back. So you won't be able to exchange for them. So I highly recommend you get on that because damn, the rewards are nice. Purple marrow cleansing potion. <laughs> what even is that? Increase the progress of meridian cleansing. What? Oh, I need Ren Vessel to do that. Fuck. That's rare as hell items. Look at that. Orange items. See? Do you see what I mean? Every day you can do this and you just get a bunch of shit. And it, this is also what <laughs> horrifically destroyed my inventory. As you can just see all the purple items. Doing that, finding that was awesome. And it was followed immediately by fuck. I have no inventory space for this. Not at all. But that is a great thing to do. I highly recommend you do it. And no, I have not forgotten about horse, physiognomy, whatever. I will come back to that. Because I personally still don't know where it is. I just know that it's called North Gang Camp or something. So, we'll come back. We'll come back. Don't worry, people. Now, how supply is basically just ranking. It's basically just ranking. The people ranking, the weapon ranking, whatever. Now, on the Ask Around thing, you can go into this Junshan competition, but you do have to do it during X amount of time, a notification will come up and it will say the competition is being held and then you actually have to go and find it in um, the world, which is interesting. But I can't participate without an invitation because I'm too shit, unfortunately. Now, the Master of Inner, you're going to need to be at the end of the first set of practice um, near Renmai, basically, to even talk to this guy because you have to be in Jade Rotator to increase the speed of your training. So that's, that's a while down the track, you know? Now, the maid will be able to tell you everything that goes on in the world, basically. And you can get a bit of an explanation for the things you can do, like Lunar Maze, eight trigrams. Those two things are both currently unlocked for me. And I do them every day. But these will give you basically a little explanation of what you could do and how it works. But the only thing it doesn't do is tell you how the talisman in eight trigrams works. So you, once you collect the 28, as I said before... It's a bit different to the explanation. The translation really could use some work. Uh, it makes it harder for me, but you know. It is what it is. Now, the bar. I explained the bar before. Very important place if you want to get people to train with. The after drinking talk is strangely named, I have to say. But that's basically like the top people in, I'm assuming, my server. But who knows. Now, you can talk to this lady boss in order to switch to another table, if the table you chose for the day, you don't really like them, but it's going to cost you a, I'm assuming, rare item, because I've never seen them before. <laughs> so, that's unfortunate. The rest, they're kind of pointless, with the exception of Tang Fen Yu. He will actually give you Tang um, invitations, which will allow you to go into... In World, there's a place called Tang, and you get you need one of these things in order to get in. And you, of course, generate the Tang fragments and those you can tr exchange for stuff, basically. I wouldn't mind all of these items, but we'll get there once I do start going into Tang. We'll get there. Now, the mall is a purely erudite um, shop, so nothing here. You can't buy anything here unless you're basically a pay-to-win, because shit's actually pretty expensive. This silver order is the thing that's going to allow you to do more adventuring um, over time. So I can only do 28 with the bronze order. If I bought that silver order, I'm assuming that would go up to quite a bit, maybe 40, maybe 50. I'm not sure, but I can't get it regardless. So, you know. Now the Emporium, this is a very, you, you're going to be in the Emporium a lot because this is where you sell the items that you get from adventuring, basically. Now in costume, I highly recommend you buy this green belt. And, or if it's different for you, buy them. Just buy them, because you're not going to find green items for a fucking long time. So just buy them. <laughs> They're not expensive. They're really not. Like, super cheap. And I'm still wearing mine from when I first found them, so highly recommend it. Now, medicinal. This is probably the most common sources of blueprints, is alchemy, obviously. There are a lot of pills in this game, and no... I don't know what most of them do because I honestly haven't needed to make pills yet. But I imagine that's something I'm going to have to actually <laughs> figure out quite soon. Because you need a fucking bronze stove per pill as well. So everything gets used up. Including the blueprint, the stove and the ingredients. And God forbid you fail. Oh, 
That just sounds painful, fuck. Now, the market. Obviously, first one, shop. This is where I plan on buying my damn increased personal space. This luggage, 24, sca 24 squares, but it costs so much. 10800 that's fucking painful. Good God. I also recommend that, um, it, just for the sake, like, A, of your sanity, and B, it's easier. Buy piles of wood, sand, and iron in order to level up your dwelling. Seriously, you just do it, all right? You will save so much time, and you will save yourself pain from manually trying to farm this shit, okay? Just buy it. It's cheap. It's cheap. Don't worry about it. Now, you can also buy these little things that will slightly increase the chance of you breaking through successfully. Now, at level 39, I only have a, I think it was a 91% chance to successfully break through. But once I looked at the, sort of the pricing for this, really, I mean, that's just martial arts, and it's like 48 gold. Doesn't seem like much, but when it's only 3% per pill, 240, you know, three pills for 9% increased success rate is going to cost 720. I don't mind paying that in the future, but for now, when specifically working towards trying to increase the size of my inventory, is a bitch. That's all I'm saying. It's a bitch. And this is also where you're going to buy your small yard land deed. So every time you level up your residence, this will be replaced with the level above it, basically. And that's also fucking expensive. But you won't have to worry about that for a decent amount of time because you have to obviously grind your way up there. I think, yeah, I'm almost at level one small yard, which is not a lot. Now, the Dushan Bay, I think that is. This is basically where you buy your workers for your house and you'll eventually need carpenters as well but I haven't got to carpenters yet because you do need I think it was a mansion the extension of the mansion to the courtyard yeah I can't I haven't done that yet obviously but hiring of servants is cheap but this is where you do it it's a bit out of the way doesn't really make sense but <laughs> this is where you buy them you'd only be able to get two to begin with and that will upgrade to six when you reach small yard now the gardens this this is a very, 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 very good thing, um, obviously, because perception increase there. You can see that's the next level up. That's not what I have at the moment. Mine is a 10-year tree, not a 50-year tree. But the amount of gold I used to level my 5-year to a 10-year was about, well, 5,000-ish. And as I said earlier in the video, that fucked me for increasing my storage capacity and further fucked me <laughs> every time I finish an adventure, I have to physically sell one or two things, open it, bring them out, sell it, open another one, bring it out, because you get multiple mails based on how many times you've done the adventure. It's fucking annoying. But regardless, highly recommend you do do at least the first level of this, which is like a thousand gold, because it will make a difference. Once you start hitting four star, five star martial arts, you, you're going to need it because you just simply can't, your max storage of perception will not be enough to cover the level from like six, seven onwards. So that's why I even bothered to do mine and my max um, perception now, something in the realm of 600,000, which is, which is not even enough, to be honest with you. Like now that I'm getting higher level martial arts, it costs so much. How much do I need? 330. Yeah. So I use every single one of my perception points here and it only just went to level six. <laughs> Ouch. But yes, perception is important. And it's one of the things that you can really actually physically affect with, by free to play. Inner Force is a completely different beastie. I have not found many ways to increase Inner Force um, cultivation, with the exception of that book I stole, apparently. He gave it to me for 100 coins, all right? He should have just beat up his problems last time, not fucking sold it to me and then beat me up afterwards, prick. Anyway. The only real ways that I found of increasing Inner Force was Secret Skills and the um, initial one you start with, which is Pure Heart. Now, there, I'm sure there are other martial arts out there that do increase that, but holy shit, it's hard to find. You know, it's, it's very hard to find. <laughs> now, this should be done. There we go. All right. I need to just learn this last skill. Dodge. There we go. Perfect. Kung Fu, raise dodge by 32 points permanently with increasing, as I level, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> now, the market itself, being through here, the painter is where you will change your, <laughs> not that this matters purely because it's too expensive. You're probably not going to change your um, frame around your character, unless, you know, just for reflex. <laughs> 
this 30 day, I'm a, it's kind of like a monthly, but this basically acts like, a, well, this is my assumption, actually. I, I don't know because I haven't bought it, but my assumption is that it acts as a eight trigrams piece for 30 days. So you can pray once a day 30 times without having to collect all 28 pieces, because let me tell you, that takes a couple of days. And yeah, I was kind of disappointed with how like many fragments you need to the to what it gave you. And then, you know, I was like, yeah, no, it makes sense. You're supposed to hoard them and then specifically use one for a specific reason. For example, crafting. But yes, now Department 6 and Greenwood Alliance, I can't get at them. I just can't get at them. They just think I'm a spy sent by the other. So I guess we'll see what happens there as I level up. It's fucking annoying, to be honest. I'd like to see what's in there. But no, fuck me, basically. <laughs> now, I was right from the last um, video where I was like, yeah, more stuff's going to unlock as I beat it sort of thing, and that has proven true. Obviously, this whole area is just going to be filled with things that I can do. I am going to actually start working on pushing my way through the adventure itself after I figure out where the fuck this horse riding bullshit is. And on that note, let's go and see if we can't find North Gang, because... I mean, frankly, so there we go, North Horse, join, library, boom, there it is, fucking there it is, evaluate horse, it's in, it's in North Horse, huh, that's a fucking aptly name, isn't it, <laughs> uh, alright, chores, I'm gonna have to work on doing this one now, what else you got, windblade, broken hand, I suppose I'll get Gecko riding. I don't know what that means, but improves character stats after enlightenment. Sounds good. But yeah, evaluate horse, ladies and gentlemen. I found it. Holy shit. That is not what it was named before, but this is this is what the Chinese um, forum said, that this is where you get it. So I guess we'll see if that is the case <laughs> when I generate enough seg merit to find it. So I'll let you know on that one, ladies and gentlemen. Whew, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> I think I think I'll leave this one here. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments anything I missed for people who have played further than me, know more than me, for the love of Christ. Please comment. You know, please. I don't want to have to troll through Chinese forums again. It's hard, man. It's hard. <laughs> anyway, as always, have a great day.